But first, mobile phones. Today, it's difficult to imagine life without them. We don't just use them to make calls, but to send texts and emails, and even to take snapshots. But how do they fit so many gadgets into such a small handset? No matter how many features a phone's got, if it doesn't look good, it won't sell. So it all begins with a designer who sketches out some ideas. They draw inspiration from current trends in fashion and sport. But the real challenge is to come up with a phone that will be the must-have accessory in six months' time. Once a design has been approved, they make a few prototypes with slight variations to see which model works best. The phone has to be tough enough to survive in the real world, so the models go through a series of rigorous examinations. First, it's the Oops, I Dropped My Phone test. When a mobile slips through your fingers, it doesn't always land on a soft rug. So they drop it from about five feet onto a solid surface. It should also be able to take a few knocks while it's still in the box. If you're planning on going mountain biking with it, it'd better survive this test. It also has to survive those texting addicts who can't keep their fingers off the buttons. This machine presses each button 150,000 times. And then there's the jeans pocket test. Sand, dust and paper shavings might not be what you keep in your pockets, but it's good to know that the phone can handle it. A machine slides the phone in and out of the pocket for 18 hours, simulating four years of wear and tear. As well as being durable, this high-tech gadget should be easy to use. Here, an occasional phone user picked from the general public is monitored as she finds her way around the menus. Any hesitations are recorded, so the phone can be made more user-friendly. The prototype that makes it through all these tests can then be mass-produced. Here at the factory, they can make up to 50,000 phones in a single day. The base for the phone's circuitry is a conductor board. They're made six at a time. A template is laid onto the boards, and a machine spreads tin over the exposed areas. The tin acts as a glue for the various electrical components, some of which are literally microscopic. It would take an age and probably drive you mad if you try to place them all by hand. Thankfully, a robot does the job. It takes the tiny components from off these spools and places them into the phones with pinpoint accuracy. There are 300 of the tiny components in each phone, but it doesn't take long to fit them, just a tenth of a second each. Once assembled, the conductor board is heated in an oven at 270 degrees Celsius. The heat causes the tin to melt and solder the parts in place. Almost everything is done by robots. But fitting the lens for the camera is an exception. It's slotted into place and then connected to the camera chip. Next, the screen and the inner keypad are assembled. This weighted metal wheel causes the phone to vibrate when it rings. 
Now all of the parts can move into their new home. The whole unit is neatly screwed together, and then it's passed along the line. Mobile phones come with all kinds of extras, but they all have one function in common. They make calls. They do this by translating the sound of your voice into digital information, and then sending it onto another phone, which translates it back into sound. Each phone is assigned a 17-digit number, giving it a unique identity. The cover is added, and it's boxed up with battery, charger and instructions. Finally, the box is weighed to within a fraction of a gram to make sure that nothing's missing. And it's ready, the high-tech device that's both a blessing and a curse of modern life.